everyone, I'm Robert and we're doing uh, recipe number two with the sun oven this weekend, braised beef and red wine. I have my beef browned and stuff right here. It's a chuck roast. I cut it up and uh, browned it. And here in this pan, after I did that, I took some bacon. You can use pancetta, but I just had bacon. So I browned it and then I cut up like two two celery stalks, three small carrots, an onion, and some garlic. I sliced up some garlic and put in some thyme leaves and <clears throat> uh, base, uh, basil, ba I mean bay leaf. And then I put some crushed rosemary in. So on the beef, you put salt and pepper and all of that. I'm gonna put a little tomato paste in it, this, cook it around, get it kind of blended in. I don't know, there's a recipe, but I just read it and I'm kind of improvising. It smells amazing. I just took that much out. I'll take a little more. Give it a little more tomato. So we're using a cab. Depending on the, you know, when the information I read about this, the different kinds of wines give a different flavor. Some of the wines on Epicurious say that you know the cooking wines are more expensive than you know what people might want to use and they're filled with salt and so i just we just went with what we had in the pantry and we have a cab so cabernet is excellent with beef that's what we're doing mm -hmm. so i'm going to let this kind of simmer a little bit before I put it in here with the meat. And so what you'll do is you'll just cover all of this and then you're supposed to actually put in um, some beef broth or water, but I'm just gonna, we're just gonna drink, use all the wine. What we don't use, we can have with dinner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's January 25th. The outdoor temperature is about 50 uh, here. This has been sitting out here about 10 or 15 minutes and we are already up to about 225 degrees. It's warming up nicely. Uh, the sun's a little higher in the sky than last time we used it. So that light, you know, that focusing uh, thing is a little more, it's getting closer to the, um, the hole. And so we should be able to get the temperature that we need to. Uh, just let this thing warm up for a while and see what we get. Oh man, that looks and smells amazing. It's not even cooked yet. The recipe says put it in the oven, Dutch oven, 375, two and a half to three hours. So anyway, it's 12.06. We're going to go ahead and put it out there, even though the sun oven's not ready, I think, and just let it cook and go. It's at about 2.50 right now, and we can stick it out there for four, four, probably get four, four and a half hours of sun. Don't burn yourself. All right, here we go. See what happens this time without two pots. It should fit. <sighs> okay, can you... I'll push it down on you. There you go. Oh, it doesn't want to go. Let's push down. There you there go. There it goes. Okay. Okay. Now we'll focus it again. Here, could you hold that? I'll focus. So he's going to line up that hole down in there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. So. And I think in this case, we ought to. I'm going to anticipate huh? I'll bring it this way a little bit to anticipate the sun's movement so we have to come out here every five minutes it has been uh, cooking for about 45 minutes and the temperature I don't know if that's visible but the temperature is now uh, 325 uh, so we're up near the temperature that the you know is recommended on the recipe which is 375 maybe we'll get there uh, maybe we won't but uh, that's okay. I mean, the lower the temperature, the longer we just leave it in. That looks like it's going great so far. This is another look what e-chip has me doing moment. I just have to come check this. And now it's not sunny at all. But I can't really see in there. Oh, it's not. I can't see the temperature. Go ahead and give it a little turny turn. Get it right there like that. Now I want to go see what those cackling hens are doing. I don't even know if you can see me or what I look like, but we, uh, the weather forecast today said it wasn't going to get cloudy until three. 
like two o'clock now. We put this in at like 10 after 12 or so. So we're gonna have to pull it, see how done it is, and maybe cook it in the oven the rest of the way. It smells really good. It does, it smells good. Let's see, let's take a look at it. Oh, oh gosh. It looks good. It may it be looks ready, good. I don't know. I, I doubt see. it. But we'll see. Anyway, that's the thing, you know, dealing with the sun oven. You can't Oh, it just tipped over when we took when we took the food out because in the winter you gotta have it tilted up so much. Okay. Alright, so we I'll tilted it down and we'll clean it in a little bit. But yeah, during the winter time you have to have that thing tilted up so far to be able to get direct <clears throat> sun into the oven. So that's kind of one of the hazards of it but you know considering we have so much sun at contentment it will be something we will use probably pretty frequently in the winter okay we couldn't wait to to eat this when we got it out of the oven we put it in the oven for th at 350 for an hour or longer and my goodness this is amazing this is uh, beef bourguignon and uh, it's tender juicy it's got amazing flavor you can taste the wine in it robert also made some good old-fashioned kolkanen uh, which is mashed potatoes with you know herbs and things in it and it is amazing this is an amazing meal tastes awesome thank you robber okay time to clean up the oven we'll just hit it with a little bit of glass cleaner clean the reflectors and the and the oven uh, glass and put it away thanks for watching